Hey everybody, happy Friday. Well, I don't know about you, but I sure am happy to see the sun is shining on this Friday after the week we've had here in Northwest Ohio. <laughs> that felt a little bit too much like winter. So welcome to our Friday live q and I'm a little bit early, a couple minutes early. So I'm gonna give Facebook just a moment or two to give notification that we are here. I hope to have many of you join us. If you do, will you hop in here and say hi so that I can tell who's here. You're always welcome to ask me questions as you enter or as I'm sharing the content for the day. And if you watch it on a replay, will you do me a favor and just write the word replay below the video so that I can tell who actually is you know, seeing these videos or taking time to watch them as well. So today we're going to be talking about the best morning and evening stretches. Well, hi, Corey. I'm glad to see that you made it into the group. Hopefully you'll find this valuable. So we're going to give everybody just another moment or so. Um, this question was posed by Jenna, who is the administrative assistant at Fit for Life. She was asking, what are the best stretches for morning and evening? So that's what we're going to be talking about today. But this group is always a safe place for asking any question that you might have. So it's my um, commitment to come in here on Fridays when at all humanly possible and share a little bit of my knowledge with you all. So, all right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Welcome to our live Q&A here in our Facebook wellness group. In case you don't know who I am, my name is Jennifer Nisett and I'm the physical therapist and owner of Fit for Life Physical Therapy in Concord. Today, we're gonna to be talking about what are the best morning and evening stretches that you can be doing. This is a good question, and it made me chuckle a little bit because there's like hundreds of stretches you could do. There's, there's so many choices. It was very difficult for me to think about which ones would be best or my favorite. So I will preface this by two disclaimers. The first one is these are just my professional opinion based on 26 plus years of physical therapy experience and kind of knowing where in the body people tend to be stiff and tight or need some flexibility. So there's many options and it's not cookie cutter. So if you're having a specific pain problem, then the second disclaimer is that this advice does not substitute for a thorough physical therapy evaluation. And I encourage you that if you are experiencing pain, musculoskeletal pain, that you actually seek professional advice on what you could do specifically for your problem. So those are my two disclaimers. These are my favorite, these are my, it's my opinion about these exercises. And if you're struggling with some pain, go ahead and get yourself in for your personal assessment so that we can figure out what's going on with you. So let's talk about stretches. First of all, this is a pretty um, widespread statement that I'm gonna make, but when we talk about stretching, a lot of times my runners, runners or athletes will ask me this, like, when when do I stretch before I run or after I run and this is kind of along the same lines right you is it helpful to stretch in the morning when you're cold like cold meaning your body's cold you haven't been moving is that okay or is the nighttime better because you're more loose and flexible and warmed up so what I would say is when I'm talking to an athlete it is my opinion that the body will respond better to Dyna more dynamic movements, meaning you're taking your body through general range of motion. You're not necessarily holding prolonged stretching. And that the benefit of doing a long hold type stretch works much better with muscles that are warmed up. And again, there's sort of conflicting evidence about whether or not that's true. I would say this is my professional opinion and practice. I prefer dynamic exercises before, and I prefer static exercises or, or holding stretches after. And that's 
the premise that I went on for these exercises that I'm talking about, the stretches in the morning and at night. So here's what I'm gonna say. I came up with five exercises for the morning and five exercises for the evening. And I'm gonna talk you through them, but it's a lot easier for um, a visual demonstration or even just a picture. So what we are working on, just like last week when we talked about flat feet, we're, gonna, we're working on an informational handout or a PDF that will have images and descriptions of all five of all 10 of these exercises that I'm gonna share with you. So if you're interested in receiving the PDF when it's completed, below this video, I want you to comment the word stretches and we will get that to you um, as soon as we can. So here we go. These are my top five stretches for the morning and top five stretches for the evening. So again, one of my one of my favorite things to do in the morning, I don't know how many of you guys in here are watching our yoga lovers, but a lot of these stretches are actually taken from yoga. So one of my favorite things to do in the morning is, you know, get yourself up out of bed. Everything is cold and stiff and sometimes a little bit achy. Move around a little bit first, have your cup of coffee, and then you can begin doing some stretches. So my first exercise for the morning is just called a sun salutation. That's taken from yoga. It's actually kind of a flow. You go through, you know, raising your arms all the way up over your head, and then you sort of fall forward into a forward fold. You end up all the way down on the ground. You can do like an upward facing dog and a downward facing dog, some lunges while you're there. It's really like a full body flow and it's called sun salutation. So that is the first thing that I think helps sort of wake the whole body up that is helpful to be done in the morning. The second thing, second exercise I would say was good for the morning would be a set of squats. And if your knees bother you, you can do bridges instead. Bridges are also known as the, um, oh shoot, it's like squats laying down basically. It's working the same muscles. I lost the creative wor wording for it. But if you can't do squats, then you can do bridges. And the reason that I think is important is because we kind of sit on our butts all day and a lot of us don't have strong glutes. And those are important for your core and for your posture and all sorts of things. So get your glutes fired up in the morning by doing squats or bridges. Number three is a range of motion movement for the hips actually. It's a seated exercise where you're kind of in a 90-90 position with your knee, hips and knees and you're taking your hips through internal and external rotation. That'll be easier for you guys to see in the image. And we, we tend to get stiff in our hips as we sit on them and as we get a little older, we tend to lose internal rotation of our hips. And so that's one of my uh, newfound favorite exercises to do. It's also good for runners to kind of get their hips opening up and firing and loose before they go for a run. So the third move is a hip rotation exercise. The fourth favorite exercise I have for the morning would be a downward facing dog. You can also do that in your sun salutation. But in, instead of a long static hold with the downward facing dog, I would encourage it to be a little bit more active where you're actually like pedaling out your feet and using it to get a nice stretch down the backside of your body, your glutes, your hamstrings, and particularly your calves. So downward facing dog is fourth. And then the last move that I like to give um, or would say would be good in the morning would be goalpost arms. So we wanna, we wanna encourage people to open up their chest, right? I talk about posture all the time. And goalpost arms is simply just bringing the arms down so your shoulders are pulled back, your shoulder blades are together, and you just kind of reach up towards the ceiling and then down as you bring your elbows down towards your side in like a goalpost. You're, you're activating your entire posterior chain, your backside of your body, and you're stretching out the chest. So if you can do those five things in the morning, your blood will be flowing, your heart will be open, and you'll be ready to go about your day. In terms of the evening, I have five different exercises that I would say would be helpful to most people to do at night. First exercise is one you've probably seen me share before, and that's a chin tuck. It's a 
horizontal movement of taking your head straight back. This is less of a stretch. It's just more of good for you. <laughs> um, we walk around too much all day like this and we gotta get our head back on top of our shoulders. So there is evidence that shows that if you do 10 chin tucks once a day, twice a day, it does improve your resting head posture. So chin tucks is number one. The second move that I would say you should do at night, again, also a movement and less a stretch, but this is the press up. Some of you that have had a physical therapy assessment and have had back pain in the past may have been told by a physical therapist that you should do a press up. It is basically, it's also like an upward facing dog, a little more in a relaxed version, but it's a backward bending movement for your low back. That's generally safe, again, for most people between the ages of 30 and 55. If you're experiencing pain, I encourage you to seek an assessment first. If you're just generally looking for balancing out all the forward bending that you do in your life, then doing some backward bending at night before you go to bed would be a very good idea. That's number two. Tip number three or stretch number three is child's pose. Many people know what that is um, from yoga, but you basically start out on all fours in a tabletop position and then you shift your hips back so that you're kind of sitting on your feet and your arms you know, and your head spread right out in front of you and you're getting a really good stretch through your sides, through your back, through your glutes. It's a nice relaxing pose to de-stress and unwind at the end of the day. The fourth stretch that I would say I'm a fan of is torso rotation. So what you're gonna do there is you're gonna be laying down on your back with your arms straight out at your side and your knees are bent to 90 degrees. You're gonna lift your knees up towards your head and then you're gonna drop them over to one side. So you're kind of laying in a rotated position. You're gonna get a tremendous stretch through the chest, a little bit through the back and your hips. Um, that, is a, that is a very good exercise for sort of stretching a lot of different things that are generally tight on people and then you go both ways. That one you definitely, along with child's pose, can hold longer. And then the very last exercise, this is my favorite one for anybody that's done yoga. The, the perfect stretch to end your day is literally called Shavasana. And that is laying on your back with your palms up and your eyes closed and you just breathe. You just spend as long as you can letting go, taking deep breaths, exhaling all the stress of the day. And if you do those five things, your posture will be better, your heart rate will come down, you'll de-stress, you'll get some flexibility in things that need to be loosened up and you should be ready to go to sleep. So there you have it. Those are my five exercises for the morning, five exercises for the evening that will help you be fit for life. So I hope you guys found that valuable. I would also say that in the evening, it's a very good time to personalize that routine. So if you're struggling with something, you've seen a physical therapist or you know that you need to stretch something, do that in the evening as well. I'm, we are a big fan of foam rolling we keep it in the family room. And there's a ton of things that you can do, not necessarily even like rolling out your muscles, but actually using the foam roller to help you stretch certain muscles. And so you could add the foam rolling routine to the evening. I think that's all I have for you. If you guys have any questions, go ahead and comment them below. What I would also encourage you to do, or just remind you, is that if you're looking for the PDF with descriptions of these exercises comment below stretches and we will send that to you and then if you're looking for personalized exercises for yourself I just want to remind everyone that I do offer a total body diagnostic that's a free service at the moment it's about a 20 minute assessment where I take a look at you specifically put you through like a little prevention injury prevention or movement screen and at that point, I would be able to really tell you what areas I think you have going on specifically that could be addressed by a personalized stretching program. So if that would be something that you'd find helpful, go ahead and I'm going to put the application. Um, it's, a, it's an application form, basically. It sort of checks our schedule for us. 
and we'd be happy to get you um, on the schedule to take a look at you to see if there's any specific way we can help you be fit for life. So thank you guys so much for watching. Corey, I'm so glad you got to watch us live. And I hope everybody has a fabulous weekend, and I will talk to you more next week. Have a good weekend, everybody.